Hello, this is David Ferguson from MLC CAD Systems, and I'm going to go ahead and be showing you some of the new enhancements Mastercam 2022 has made to some of our favorite 3D surfacing toolpaths. And we're going to start by looking at what's new with Waterline. Now on my screen, I'm in the middle of back plotting a, a fairly traditional waterline, and I'm, I'm trying to hold about a two millimeter, two millimeter step over as I work my way down this part's walls. The problem is, you know, holding an even step over, depending on the part itself, some of those flats and some of those features might fall into a bit of a no man's land, and they'll sort of fall between passes. And I don't really have a way to combat that other than coming back and using additional tool paths to finish those features that were missed. But in Waterline now, I have a new feature called Critical Depths. If I look at my part, I can see that with a traditional Waterline, one of my passes is going to be too high above this floor, and my next pass down is going to be below it. So this floor just sort of falls into that no man's land. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at that new feature in Waterline. If I go into my cut parameters down on the cut parameters page, I have a new feature here called critical depths. And included with critical depths is a number of options of how I'd like to apply this, either using an automatic method based off my solid model or using some manually selected Z values. Now, initially, I'm just going to go ahead and just turn it on and see what the results are. So I'm literally just turning on critical depths and we can see what that's going to do. Comparing my initial waterline, where my passes are sort of straddling that flat surface, and with critical depths activated, you can see I've redistributed my step over to include those flat surfaces. Now, that does mean that I'm not necessarily holding a perfect two millimeter step the entire way. Uh, I'll be basically doing anything up to two millimeters. So it's almost like a minimum cup depth kind of value. Um, but I do get to include those flats. Um, now, there again, there are a lot of options for critical depth, so this isn't my only, you know, only choice here. Um, I can choose to base um, my passes uh, off the flats themselves, so I can use a little bit more of the side of the flute there, and that's a flats-only strategy. I can also use something called contact flats, and when I use contact flats, this is so far my favorite. Uh, I get a nice, again, evenly distributed two millimeter step or desired step over, but for my flat surfaces, I get these really nice, clean, simple, open passes. So instead of doing all these big loops for those flats, I just get these nice little open passes. I can also use what is called contact flats only. And contact flats only essentially turns a waterline into a wall finishing routine to where I'm simply now using those flat values or those flat surfaces to dictate where my passes are going to go. So I'm not doing the walls anymore. You know, I am, but I'm not doing them with a step. I'm doing them based off the flats. Uh, I can also add, if I want to, and I've added a very large extension, an extension to the entry and exit for those open passes. And this is about 20 millimeter, which is probably about 15 millimeter than you do in real life. But I wanted to show you where those would get applied. Now, all of those initial methods that I'm talking about, those are all automatic methods, right? So just based entirely off the solid model. I also get some options to basically pick and choose what critical depths or what Z depths I'm going to include. And all of those have sort of the same basic idea. So my first option here is just basically use some manually selected options. Again, these are full looped passes um, where I've just selected which flats I want to include. And that's done basically from your cut parameters page. Uh, I can do a strictly manual method where I'm actually going in and selecting individually those depths based off the model itself. I can do that as, an, uh, as a manual um, contact point, right? So I can select where those open loops, or I'm sorry, those closed loops are going to apply. So very similar. And of course, I can do just open loops or open passes based on the Z depths that I'm selecting on the part. So I can go from a very traditional water line where I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of hit, a little hit and miss depending on the model, you know, to paring that down to simply doing some wall finishes based on where I'm selecting, all of which driven directly off the solid model. Um, so Waterline now has uh, basically a wall finish routine. Um, so if you think traditionally you would have done this with I don't know, half a dozen contours, uh, I can now talk a Waterline into doing that for me. And that's a really nice change. 
Mastercam 2022 has also made some significant changes to the way your 3D blend toolpath can work. Now, what I've got on my screen is a, is a different part, obviously. And what we're gonna look at is uh, a couple of options for how to use the new 3D blend toolpath. Now, traditionally, when you think about a blend, you tend to sort of think about open chains, right? Um, but for this example here on the top of this, this sort of boss, um, instead what I'm using uh, is I'm using a closed chain around the outside and a point in the center of my drive surface. Um, and that's something I'm only able to do recently with Mastercam. So my first chain is around the outside, uh, just a piece of wireframe or a solid. Uh, my second chain is just a point located in the center uh, of where I'm trying to drive the tool. And I'm using that as my blend curves. So not just open chains anymore. Okay? And this is a very traditional blend tool path. It's using a 3D collapse with a step over about one millimeter uh, with a one-way pass. Um, when I do that, though, I do get uh, these transition moves between passes. It's more of a scallop type of tool path. Well, one of the new things you can do with blend is you can now set blend to be a one-way spiral path. Um, again, same chain options I'm using, a closed chain around the outside, a point in the center. Um, except this time I'm choosing to do this as a spiral. And I get a very, very lovely spiral tool path uh, rather than those sort of transition moves. So if I'm looking for a really nice finish on this surface, you know, a spiral blend, and I love saying that, um, is going to be one of your go-to options, especially because now I, I literally can do that entire complex surface with just a chain around the outer boundary and a point in the center. Um, really, really lovely way to go. Now, I'm going to show you another thing that you can now do with your blend toolpath. And that is go ahead and use it as a one-way 2D, so almost like a raster or a flow line. Now again, this time I'm basing my, my drive geometry off a slightly different model. So I've got a, a big gap here in the center of that boss. That's not our final toolpath, by the way. Uh, for my blend lines, I'm using a couple of chains. And again, that's something that, you know, being aware that you can do with blend is good to know. The, the chains don't necessarily have to be on the drive surfaces or connected to it in any way. They're simply helping me control the direction of my path. Right? So these chains are both sitting well off that part, and I've just sort of placed them, you know, basically by eye, right? Now, doing that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this to a one-way method, still about a mill step over, um, but I'm going to go ahead and do basically a 2D collapse. Now, the only thing I don't like about this, and it's, it's not a bad toolpath, is that I am spending a fair amount of time jumping back and forth between those surfaces. We can see those yellow uh, rapid lines between those two areas. So what I can do to stop that from happening, and it's again new for blend, is I now have the ability to optimize my cut order and that basically sort of keeps it confined by region. So with optimizing my cut order set, I'm now spending time on one of these boss surfaces before I jump over to the next. So you can see again the difference between those two. I know which one I would prefer to run. So new for blend is the ability, again, very easily to use closed chains and points to define a closed surface, um, the ability to turn that toolpath into a spiral, uh, and of course now the ability to optimize those cut orders when you're doing something like jumping between different regions to keep the toolpath sort of contained to a region before it moves on. Those are just some of the enhancements to two of our favorite toolpaths.